this moment, there are roughly three trillion trees in the world. Far above the trees fly all kinds of birds, about 50 billion of them. Those birds are observed by those on Earth, eight billion people. The three have coexisted and lived through more than two million years together. Uh, Throughout the history of culture and civilization, humans have always revered the principle of coexisting life. 4,000 years ago, the ancient Shu people of China gave interpretations and explanations of this idea of life. Masks, ancient trees, birds. Are the beautiful artifacts real or just imagination? What meaning do they still carry for us? Is the ancient Shu civilization similar to or different from the other ancient civilizations of that time? This is Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan, the epicenter of southwest China. There is an animal here that represents the 3,200 years that this city has been established, a city that has never changed its name or its place. Not only that, in 2005, the golden sunbird was chosen to become a symbol of Chinese cultural heritage. More than 3,000 years ago, the Jinsha site was the heart of Shangdu in the late Shang dynasty, and it has become a key cultural center in the upper reaches of the Yangtze River. Just a few dozen kilometers from the Jinsha site in Guanghon Sangxing Dui, a large number of bronze statues have been unearthed, which reflect the ancient Shu people's bird worship. Despite the fact that they look little like the birds we see today, they're very similar to the birds in ancient Chinese mythology. If Sangxing Dui culture is the pinnacle of ancient Shu culture, then Jinsha is a continuation of that culture. Sangdu 完全照搬啊,这个重气铸造它和现实生物当中的这些鸟还是不一样的。In other ancient civilizations of the world, birds that were spiritually significant, they also flew above the national flag. Legend has it that the ancient Aztecs, who were precursors to Mexicans, had no place to live and wandered. Then, 
the people's elder was told by the sun god in a dream that if they saw an eagle with a snake in its mouth standing on a cactus, they could settle there. Y en ese sentido, las aves, por ejemplo, las águilas, estaban muy vinculadas con el sol. Entonces, las aves y el sol, eh, perdón, las águilas y el sol son básicamente lo mismo. Por lo tanto, las águilas son completamente eh, veneradas por las personas. Entonces, cuando tú ves un águila, no estás viendo un águila, estás viendo un dios. People used to worship birds in antiquity because they approached them as epiphanies of the deities. Because birds are connected to the air, to the heaven, or they were thought to be the epiphanies of deities, the representations of deity to the world. You said it very right. Sizan 那么人和自然的这种关系 When people first started to raise their eyes to the heavens, birds were already soaring above, carrying with them the longing humans had for the sky. When these birds stopped flying and roosting in big trees, it also stirred up the boundless reverie of the ancients. 山海经的记载呢In 1986, the bronze tree of the Shang period was excavated in Sangxingdui. This is considered to be the highest point of the ancient Shu people's worship of trees. It was named the most important sacred tree. This fascinating artifact is 395 centimeters tall and is the largest fully intact bronze relic to ever be unearthed. 这个树是在神话传说里边非常重要的一个元素有某种观念 In the eyes of the ancient Shu people, leaves change and fall in an endless cycle, and the strength and vitality of the trees reach far beyond what humans can grasp. To commemorate their observations and preserve their wisdom, they used their craftsmanship to create artifacts that would strike generations to come with awe and reverence. 排前面的几个位置然后再分段地来做造。Coincidentally, the ancient Shu people and the ancient Mexican people, though thousands of miles apart, had a similar interpretation of tree worship. 
En la época prehispánica, y no es únicamente entre los mayas, sino realmente los mixtecos, los nahuas, tenían la misma idea, se pensaba que en, el, que en cada una de las esquinas había un árbol cósmico que sostenía el cielo y que también conectaba con la parte del de inframundo. En particular, el árbol cósmico maya me recuerda muchísimo y me hace pensar muchísimo en el árbol de bronce de San Xingdui, en China, que además entiendo que han recuperado el tercer árbol este año. Y bueno, la estética del árbol es muy parecida a varias representaciones en el área maya, donde precisamente se observa el árbol muy estilizado y aves posadas ¿no? sobre las ramas. There are other plants that have also been given deep significance other than trees. Maya el dios del maíz tenía, o el maíz como planta, además de que crea todo un círculo cultural alrededor de ella, tiene una importancia fundamental ya que está vinculada al sacrificio, a la fertilidad y a la resurrección. Sacrifice, procreation and resurrection. These words all call to mind yet another word. Life. Their worship of sacred trees and sacred birds seemingly led to an awareness of nature. From the point of view of the ancients, what distinguished human life from other life is the uniqueness of the human face. Ah Eh, esto lo, sobre todo era porque pues, nosotros como humanos, el cuerpo humano empieza poco a poco a pudrirse ¿no? y se pierde realmente el rostro y con ello también la esencia de la persona. Entonces la máscara lo que servía era como para recordar o para mantener esa esencia viva. Regarding uh, ancient Greek uh, civilization, uh, we have the, the most, uh, the earliest examples are made of uh, gold, I mean the pre in the prehistory, in prehistory uh, but also in uh, history times we have also golden masks again in a funerary uh, use uh, in order to cover the face uh, of the deceased. Uh, the most famous of the Mycenae golden masks are that conventionally uh, called uh, the mask of Agamemnon. Void of all expression, it is impossible to see different emotions on the golden mask. The portrayal of the face of the deceased reinforces the sense of mystery. In Chengdu, thousands of miles away, archaeologists have also found the golden mask, but its appearance is very different from that of a human face. Knife-shaped eyebrows, big eyes, long perforated ears. This mask has over 3,000 years of history. This exquisite object is 20.5 centimeters long, 10.4 centimeters wide, and barely 0.08 centimeters thick. It was the largest and best preserved golden mask at that time. Not long ago, With the excavation of over 500 cultural relics, including giant bronze masks and fully intact gold masks, the San Qingdui site became a subject of renewed interest. The emergence of these relics has once again astounded the world. So, this is the Ahora, 
whether in China or elsewhere in the world, from the perspective of the ancients, to obtain an other identity, it was necessary to get the target's facial features. As long as humankind was willing to depict the target face, they could acquire any identity they wanted. En las pinturas de Bonampak, que son unas pinturas muy bonitas, y lo que ocurre entonces es que vemos al gobernante ataviado, pero el gobernante trae una máscara de jaguar volteada que se la acaba de quitar y sabemos nosotros que esta máscara lo que ocurría era que cuando se la ponía el gobernante se pensaba que se convertía en alguien invencible y que podía prácticamente acabar con quien fuera. This symbolic object, regardless of how it develops and evolves, eventually will always return to the shape of the man behind the mask, which is exactly how people interpret life. Whether it's the ancient Shu, Greek, or Mexican civilization, after thousands of years, the echoes that have traversed history to provide future generations with mystery and elation are enough to amaze the world. In 1929, when a batch of ancient jade tools were discovered in Sichuan, people began to excitedly explore the ancient civilization that was born there. With the unremitting efforts of generations of Chengdu archaeologists, the history of the ancient Shu kingdom, a kingdom born in times forgotten, is finally being truly discovered. And it is utterly unique in the vast history of human civilization. Regardless of whether it's the three main origins of Chinese civilizations, namely the Yellow River Civilization, the Yangtze River Civilization, or the Grassland Civilization, or the three main ethnic group civilizations, namely the Huaxia Civilization, the Langchu Civilization, or the ancient Shu Civilization. Chengdu not only claims the title of the center of the Yangtze's upper reaches, it also was the birthplace and core of the ancient Shu civilization. It boasts unique aesthetic achievements and stunning craftsmanship. It enriches the foundations of Chinese culture and civilization, and has become the model for the development of unity in diversity. Uh, we 不同的人群都应该有不同的一种表达形式那么人类文明呢就可以实现越是民主的就越是世界我们今天面对古书先民留下的这些文化遗产我们应该进入他们的精神世界找到他们的力量源泉然后传承他们的人文精神继续的加以丰富然后加以发展融入我们城市生活的